Hi, if you'll follow me, I'll show you how to find happiness. The purpose of this video and the printed material that comes with it is to get you into the bar business as cheap as possible and with as few mistakes as possible. Owning a bar is a serious business since it has accounts payable, accounts receivable, payroll, and inventory. And all these things have to be handled in order to have the fun you're going to have in this business. <laughs> Location is a real important find. What you really want to do is make a decision between whether you need a new location or a pre-existing location. If you've got a good bit of money to work with, a new location is a possible find. With no prior reputation, you go in with your theme, what you want to do, and it's the first time it's ever been there. When you go into a new location, you have to deal with the uh, political powers to be and how long they want to take and if they want to take a vacation for a week or two. So what you've done in a new location, you're paying rent, you're paying utilities, you're already hooked up on the deposits and you're waiting on the whim of the local government to get your license. And if things aren't right, you've already tied up a lot of money. Now in a pre-existing location, it may have prior reputations, but it's already passed all those codes and all the health department rules, the fire department rules, and everything you got to get passed. So then you get a chance to open up quick, possibly by grandfathering in, transferring the existing license. The people leave, you move in, and there's a place there already set to make money. So this is the cheapest way to go. You can buy a building, and then you're investing in your own property. This is a good deal. My theory is I like to lease buildings and just run a business. When you're in the building, you own the building, you take special insurances and liabilities and you're more liable for lawsuit. Incidentally, what you might want to think about is get a clause in your lease that this thing does not take effect until your licenses are approved. Otherwise, you can get in the trap and be hooked in a lease and possibly there'll be some goofy thing that will make the city disapprove your license. Well, when you make a decision, go down to City Hall, ask them, say, this is what I want to do. I want to be in the bar business. And then ask them what you have to do. They usually will give you a checklist and tell you what departments you have to call, what phone numbers you have to call. You'll have to set up meetings, meet people down there, let them look at the location. They have their own way of doing things, and if you try to push them, uh, it'll just get all convoluted. I suggest taking a book with you and reading, you know, and wait until they're ready for you, and then wait till they've got it done. No matter how odd or unique you are, you can put this bar together just like you want it. But since you're an individual and you have a unique personality, the bar you can design will reflect the things you like. If you're a hunter, you can have a hunting theme. If you're a fisherman, you can have a fishing theme. And the people that come into your bar will be enjoying the same hobbies and things that you do, and you'll be making money at the same time. It's your preference. The object in this business, though, is to sell whiskey and beer and food. And that's how you stay in it, and that's how you keep having the fun. When you start looking for equipment for your bar, there's several ways to go. I find if you're gonna have video games in your bar, there's a video vendor out there who wants to have his games in your bar. And in order to do that, sometimes you can work with him. He will have tables, chairs, beer coolers, 
and he's more than willing to let you use these things in order to guarantee that his vending machines will be in there. I had help from one of my vendors to get me going, and you possibly can get that too. If you need kitchen equipment, hopefully uh, you've bought into a previous location and it has all the equipment there and it's already been approved by the health department. If you've got to go new and you're gonna have to go that route and you can afford to do it, it's not a bad way to go. You can go to an equipment supplier who usually has a engineer on hand who will design your kitchen and guarantee health department approval. Since most of us are not good accountants, I'm not one at all, I have an accountant and I go to him and I ask him what material he needs. And accountant that's had some experience with bars can line you up, he knows what licenses you need to have, he knows what forms you have to have. I write out my own payroll and I send monthly information to the accountant. He sends back what I should sign and what slice I gotta give to the government. Well, paperwork is something we all hate. We had it with the corporate job, and you're gonna have some of it with the bar business. What I suggest, if it's not outrageous, the paperwork, is to come in and do just a little bit every day. And that way it never backs up, and you never get out of line, your numbers are always right, and those crazy government officials won't come and get you. I personally don't take credit cards because I have to pay 4%, you have to pay 4 or 5%. The way my business is set up, most of the customers come in here, pay cash, or I will take a check with the proper ID. I'd rather do that than give uh, some organization four or five percent of my money. But in this day and age, and the type of business, and based on your clientele, credit cards are a necessary evil, and in most situations, you'll probably have to have them. I'm not too much on free, free drinks. I believe we ought to use some for special occasions. Uh, I believe the bartender should have some leniency. That he knows his customers and when they're having an anniversary or a, bar, a birthday or anything like that. Uh, what he should do always is document what he sells or what he gives away so we have an accurate record and keeps your inventory accurate. They will stay away if they got a, a bar tab at your place. What I suggest is th if you're thinking about carrying a tab and it's a good customer of yours, if you would carry them a tab, why don't you reach in your own pocket and offer them enough money to stay at the night? Make them a loan and make it personal. If you make it personal, the guy's more than likely to pay it back. In the areas of record keeping, you have to keep track of everything you do. Your accountant's gonna require it. You need to keep your tapes. You have to have a, a daily, daily report on what comes through your register. Uh, accounting departments, your accountant or your bookkeeper, unless you're doing it all yourself, is going to request this information. You'll need it yourself. If you take care of this record keeping every day, it'll only take a very brief part of your day and it'll never build up and it won't become a problem. One of the things I like to do, since I'm here every night and probably you will be too since you own the bar, I like to greet all the customers when they come in the door. Number one, I really like it. I thank them for coming by. When they leave, I tell them bye and thank them for coming by because they can buy a drink anywhere. I want to get to know them. If there's a stranger comes in the door, I want to get to know them also because either you or your bouncer will have to determine at one time whether he's going to be a good customer or not. So not only do you get to meet and greet people and introduce yourself to them, you also get a real good feel of what kind of person you might be talking to. I think getting to know your customers and letting them get to know you is pretty good. You're a small bar, you're a neighborhood bar. They want to know the owner. They want to know the guy that's in charge. They want to have somebody to go to if there's a problem. And if you're not there helping them out, nobody will. Let's go!